Yo, what's up? We're Triple Fingers from Czechia. We're making new album. You should check that out pretty soon. And you're watching Local Bank Smoke Out. Fuck yeah! yeah. We are joined by the boys in Titus! Give me a hell yeah! Let's go! Fellas, I appreciate you joining. Thank you so much. Do me a favor, properly introduce yourself. Let me know whereabouts in the world you are at the moment. Please take a second to plug and promote anything you'd like. What's up? I'm Trevor. I play guitar and sing in Titus. We're from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Ass crack of the South. Freaking, we just dropped a new EP called Chip Teeth. Labeled out to yours truly. <laughs> how did so, the chip how did the chip happen before we before we dive deep? I'll save it for you for later. I want this to be a whole suspense thing. Because everybody always asks me that question. It's not anything cool. So I usually make people wait on it. Well, why <laughs> why name the album that? Um. All right, fuck it. I'll just tell the story. Okay, so I do a bunch of dumb shit. I'm a skater, fucking Bayou boy. I've been through the ringer. And... The day before, we left to go record this album. Uh, it was the first time we ever went to like a big studio, met a big producer or anything. We did all of this with Alan Day from Four Years Strong, who, by the way, is like one of my fucking heroes. Like, I grew up, like, first time I heard that band when I was like 13, I was like, this is music. This is what I want to do. You told but me. fast forward, whatever, he hit us up and was like, hey, man, come up here, come record an album with us. So I was like, fucking right. Like, so I was Got to work, started busting my ass, saved a bunch of money, and the day before we left to go up there, I was working this pool job, and it was raining its ass off. I'm, like, trying to pick up this vacuum that goes at the bottom of the pool, and, you know, I'm, I have a fucking bungee cord in my hand, and it's slippery as shit because it's raining, and that bitch came back from, like, six feet and smacked me in the mouth and Knock my tooth straight out. So did, did, did that dentist, did that affect your? For the lack of a better way to say it, did that create or a lisp of any kind, and did it affect your your singing pronunciations? No, thank God it did not. That's what I was freaking out about. I was like, "Oh my God, dude, I'm about to go up here, and I'm gonna sound like a hick that's from the south." And this, <laughs> that. But luckily, it was just knock my tooth out, big ulcers, busted lip, but. I was able to talk straight, so instead of going to a dentist, I threw my piece of tooth into a piece of milk, and we drove 30 hours to Boston, and just went to go uh, start trying to record this song, and I left the tooth in uh, Alan's studio in the refrigerator and fucking forgot about it. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot about it. To God damn. Into, like, it's there to this solid. day. It's a good luck charm. It's a good... <laughs> It's a good luck charm. <laughs> Trevor, do I, do I, is this new ink right here at the top, right below your neck at the top of your chest? Is that new ink? Oh, yeah. Uh, my chest? I could kind of yeah. tell as someone that's had it, I could see that it has like that glimmer shine of, of some new, some new work right there. Yeah, it's about, uh, maybe a month old. Done for my homies, uh, right here in Homa, Copperhead Tattoo. Hell yeah! When I, when I play you guys, you have you, your sound is very warp tour esque, but like 15, 20 years warp warp tour esque ago. Like it has elements of like of emo pop punk. Like all, where do you where do you guys draw your inspiration from? I know you said four years strong, but aside from that, like where do you draw your inspiration from when, that creates the sound that is Titus? So, my big three bands while growing up was definitely, like, Four Years Strong, As Cities Burns, and, like, Fall of Troy. Like, I heard all them dudes and was like, I want to be a fucking Shred Lord. And then, I don't know, just trying to play post-hardcore, like, screamo stuff down in the South didn't really work back. And my role was, like, trying to play music, like, kind of growing up, so... I don't know, I kind of just fell out of it and got into, uh, like, 90s emo, like, brands like Braid, Plain, Plains for Sacred Stars, Mock Orange, fucking 
you know, hot water music, and the, the two kind of just mesh themselves into what it is now. It's just all the shit that I really liked, and I'm like, well, I don't really hear too many bands trying to do shit like this anymore, so let me try to put my own little twist on top of it. How did you meet Jace in all this while, while creating the project? So, Jace uh, joined, what, about six months ago, man? No, it was longer than that, I think. I think it's been about a year at this point. But, like, I'm still, like, pretty new, like, to this. Like, I don't, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just, like, the new guitar player. <laughs> like, well, 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 let me let me rephrase. What made you, Jace, want to get involved in what Trevor's doing? I mean, I, I the, the sound, I just love the sound. And, like, it's just fun as hell to play. I mean, shit. Like, you know, like... And I, I've been, I like, I remember seeing them in like 2019 at the varsity. Like my, my friend told me about them before, like I was even like really like in the scene and I was like, shit, this is dope. I didn't even know this was in Baton Rouge. And then like, lo and behold, a couple years later, he's like, you know, oh, they're looking for a bass player, guitar player. I was like, hey, <laughs> let me hop on. Shit. So you'd already seen the show, so you knew it was legit. You could confirm. <laughs> That yeah, is, yeah, it was right up your I alley, hell yeah. Yeah, that was with Attila. Yeah. <laughs> did you did you get to meet Attila that yeah. night? Uh no, uh actually I uh, didn't even try to be honest. I had like a really bad impression with their tour manager who was like a super big dick. For uh, sure. <laughs> after that, I'll, I was like, hey, I'm just going to stay in the back and get drunk and do my own little thing. <laughs> Hell yeah. If, uh, if, if someone was to vi visit Baton Rouge, Louisiana, where is the best food spot? I know everyone talks about crawfish and, and stuff like that, but where, where are you taking them? If someone big time's coming in town, right. like, we're hanging out with Titus, where are you feeding us? <laughs> but I don't like crawfish. I don't like seafood. I'm not big on... <laughs> The whole let's eat a bunch of mud bugs type shit. Which I know everybody from Louisiana is probably cursing my fucking name right now, but like fuck y'all. I just I don't do it. I don't fuck with them. They're they're dirty baby but, lobsters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're water roaches. Exactly. <laughs> okay, water roaches. We'll take that. We'll take that. Um were you guys informed of the the hot sauce that was needed for today? Excellent. Oh, excellent. 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 <laughs> Shit, I should have brought the other stuff I had. Jace, there's time to grab it. But before we do a trivia segment, uh, if you guys could agree on one or the other, what movie or TV show have you seen the most? If you guys could agree on either a movie or a TV show, or if I ask you trivia on this movie or TV show, you will not get stumped. Because if you do get stumped, and then remember, you get to pick it, so you have the advantage. But if I stump you, you have to do a shot of hot sauce. Whether or not you get it right or wrong, I will do the hot sauce with you. Or by myself. Shit, dude, I'm, uh... You watch anime, Jace? Because that's, like, all I've been watching lately. Oh, you know, it's... Oh, it's... Anybody... Yeah, well, I mean, I haven't seen all the, like, the big ones, but I've seen, you know, I've seen, like, Full Metal Alchemist and Vulcan. One Punch Man, well, fucking. I don't know. That, dude. You like? Shit. Oh, you asking me? Yeah, the bar. Yeah, I just saw that shit. Yeah, <laughs> Barbie. Hell yeah. I haven't seen the Barbie movie, but I do want to see Oppenheimer. But I have, or Oppenheimer, Ooh. but I have not seen that one. I saw that one as well. That was good. You did. You did the the Barbenheimer trip. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> which one? I don't know which one was better? better. I, did, oh, I don't shit. honestly. Uh, I was. What did you say, Trev? <laughs> How about the thing? The old school Kurt Russell, the thing. Ooh. Yeah, dude. Okay. Oh, is, does that work yeah. for you, Jace? Yeah, it works for me. All right. I love I feel that. Like we'll we'll think about that one. While I'm looking up some trivia on the thing, do you guys have uh, some stuff you can tell us about that's coming up in the near future? Anything you want to promote? Shows coming up? New single coming out before the year's over? Anything along the lines of that? Yeah, so we have some uh, cool shit uh, happening right now. We just released uh, a website finally, so everybody that's not in Louisiana or that can't make it out to any of our shows on tour, 
Y'all can order our brand new cassettes that just came in. A uh, bunch of cool merch. You made cassettes? Uh, tonight I'll be... Oh, yeah, yeah, we, got we, that. Uh, we made a big run of cassettes and everything. That is sweet. Oh, Jay's got right there. <laughs> that is sweet. Cassettes. I think it's cool when bands when bands do cassettes because it's one of those things that like you can't you can't exactly like play that in your car anymore. So it's almost like one of those items you buy from a band but you don't ever open it because it's like a a rarity. Well, yeah, it was the collect me. Uh, I was driving around a car for a while where that's all I had was a cassette player, and for some reason the cassette to MP3 like with the wire dongle thing wouldn't work. So I started going to whenever I was the trend of like you know people selling cassettes for shows started popping off that would be my main thing i'd go and scour the fucking you know merch tables to find as many cassettes as i can and then i'd just ride around in my car and listen to like aim for dust or fucking big bite turnstile for you know hours and hours and hours that is badass also i'm still so i'll like to have that superiority of being like haha throw this in here and really flex on y'all <laughs> <laughs> have you guys ever thought about having a feature i'm sure when you when you got to record with four years strong you probably pitched it like could, could we get you on a song as a feature blah blah, blah. maybe you did it but have yeah. you ever considered that and who would it be if so so we uh, along with this other good news we're going on tour in two weeks and along with all that we're dropping a split ep with our homies from albuquerque uh, Moonhaven, and actually on one of these songs, the two vocalists uh, for Moonhaven, the singer and the screamer, are gonna hop on and fucking jam with us. For Moonhaven? Yeah. They're, I feel like, uh, I feel like we might have played them before. That sounds familiar. Nice. We all have. Uh, I think Rico's told me that he's been on the show. They're a bunch of really sweet dudes. Mm -hmm. But, yeah with them about two weeks we'll be dropping uh three new songs with them one of them will have them doing their uh, screamy boy tracks on it screamy boy tracks so, that like. but if it, anybody ever that i could just like think off the top of my head would probably be cody bonnet from asu's burns just because him or thomas rack just because i want to fucking i just want to meet y'all you just, just want to thomas will give you the, the little face melting shred section out of nowhere in the middle of the song that'd be sweet. yeah dude i just i don't have to sing i just want y'all to play like a lick and then we're good I'm, I'm having a little bit of trouble finding the thing trivia i don't know why it's a very popular movie but i do have a question regarding <laughs> regarding the thing the john carpenter version Believe it or not, before John Carpenter was set to direct, a very big director was going to f be the director of The Thing. Can you tell me what the name of that director was who ultimately turned it down and then John Carpenter apparently Dave, watched a, uh, a, a screen uh, testing? What was it? You know it, Jace? Uh, uh, you know? I, I mean, I can guess big, big director. What? It uh, can like steal like or something. Oh. Who did you Not say? Like it Is it? I'm just guessing, but it's, it wasn't Spielberg, was it? <laughs> it is not Spielberg. It's a way smaller director than that. Smaller than that. Okay. But Trev, okay, I'll smaller. give you a guess too. Do you have a guess on who was set to direct before John Carpenter? Would it be uh, Sam Raimi? Raimi? Whatever. Man, that is a great guess. That is not correct, <laughs> but that is a great guess. It's such a good guess. Man. I'm not going to make you do the hot sauce, Trev. But Jace, if, uh, uh, it's on me and you, buddy. Oh, the the answer is Tobe Hooper, who I believe directed the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Oh, oh. Tobe Hooper. That makes so sense. I've got some uh, some blueberry hell hot sauce right here that I'm going to do. I'm going to sprint take a little get my hot sauce. Here. Woo! 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 Trev, tell me everyone has a worst show ever. Maybe he was in a band prior to Titus. I'm not sure. But tell me about a show where every single thing went wrong, but somehow you finished the set. It happens to everybody. Oh. I see the hot sauce. Cheers. 
Hell yeah, cheers. Ugh. Um. Ugh. Honestly, with Titus, I've been pretty lucky on, uh, not having too many super bad shows going on lately, but, uh, there was one funny incident not too long ago. We uh, went out there and played Texas, and, um, and I wasn't really feeling good or anything. I like wound up sleeping in the van fucking most of the day, and they woke me up like five minutes before we had to go on. And I like ran up cause, like I could barely speak all day. Like I thought my voice was not gonna make it. So we like run up. They set up all my equipment for me and everything, like, had it all ready to go, because, like I said, I was passed out in the van. What gentleman? Like, run up, and everybody's, like, all cheering by the time I get on there. I'm like, holy shit, there's, like, fucking 200 kids out here, fucking, everybody's ready to get crazy, so I, like, took a little sip of honey, and, of course, our drummer, Brennan, starts fucking making fun of me. He's like, he's like, what are you doing, dude? Why are you drinking honey and shit? I'm like, shut the fuck up, dude. Like, put coffee <laughs> So, I had, like, tour vision, everything's a blur, we start playing, I'm sweaty, I have no, I can't hear anything that's going on, I'm screaming my ass off, and in the same song, fucking me and our bassist Damien unplugged each other at least four times, <laughs> like, jumping around, kicking our cables out of our fucking, like, out of our guitars, and out of our pedal boards, <laughs> and hard, and... four times in the same song, and I was like, Jesus, dude. <laughs> that's funny it happens it happens hell yeah uh do you do you have any do you have any on like a normal day not a day when you're, you're feeling ill but on a normal day what is your pre-show vocal warm-up routine do you have anything unusual and then do you do anything when the show's over hypothetically you had five shows in five days what would you do to cool your voice down for the next day Okay, so I've never been taught, like, proper uh, vocal training warm-ups or anything, so I really don't know how that goes about it. Um, I kind of just warm my voice up by, like, kind of talking and talking a little bit louder and just kind of being my normal, dumb, funny self. Try to goof off. Uh, and main thing for me is really after the show is why I take care of myself. We have this thing to, where we go on tour the moment that we get off, I take the fuck off. I like do not speak for the next 30 minutes. I like go, don't smoke any cigarettes, don't drink any caffeine, no sugar, anything like that. So we can't find you uh, at the merch booth right after the set. We gotta wait 31 minutes. Yeah, y'all gotta wait 30 minutes, and then out of nowhere, so I'll pop back up and be like, hey, what's up, how y'all doing? There you go! Like, <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> I love it. But for 30 minutes, I'll be in the van having a panic attack, being like, holy shit, I just played a show, and now I'm sitting in the driver's seat trying to focus on what the hell's actually going on right now. <laughs> Jace, what's the hardest song to play in the current set? Ooh. Current set. Honestly, it probably still felt emo just because it's like constant, like, like, like a uh, right hand, like, like, <laughs> just like, like, rhythmically, like. Damn, it's, you it's say felt emo? What would you say, Trevor? What would your I answer be? A lot of, you know, a lot of picking going on. It mm -hmm. would definitely be what there it is for me, just because, like, it's constant fucking hammer-ons, pull-offs, fucking up and down the neck, fucking. And also on top yeah. of it, I'm trying to scream into the mic, so. Your part is hard on that song. <laughs> if if all of a sudden a label came along and offered you guys the best contract ever written in history, you get to keep your masters, it comes with a $10 million signing bonus per band member. I ask this to a lot of bands, but uh, everyone has a different answer. So you now just got $10 million, Trev, for yourself. Jace, you just separately also got $10 million, plus every other band member. You cannot buy more gear, you cannot <laughs> buy a house, and you cannot take care of your family. Tell me just a fun <laughs> toy or two that you've always wanted, like uh, that, that you now can easily afford because you have millions in the bank. What would you buy? But it can't be those three things. 
Okay, so it can't be gear, family, or... Or like a new house. Like, give me something beyond house. those things. Mm -hmm. Would a skate park be a... Be totally, a dude! Park? That's awesome! A, you'd build a skate like, park? I, like, I'm, that's, <laughs> that's I fucking mean, cool. Like, like, in general. I just want to make it to a point to where I can have a nice little skate park and then, like, be like, all right, fuck everybody. This is where I am. <laughs> Hell yeah. Dude, that he said, like, F everybody, I I'm out. See you. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say, Jace? Shit. I was probably going to say, like, just a decked out truck that I could just live in and drive around the country. <laughs> this is like an F, like a F350 plus, like something like that. <laughs> well, maybe more like, maybe not like, maybe more like just, I don't know, like, overland. No, make shit. A maybe like a Tacoma. I like Tacomas. Okay. Like a, yeah. But it's it's big enough that you that you would live in it. Yeah. So maybe it has like a <laughs> like the hitch has like a like a RV non drivable RV attached to it, or you're just in the backseat of the Tacoma. Yeah, probably just the backseat, or maybe like a roof tent or something. Fair I don't enough. know. I guess maybe like that isn't like ten million bucks, but <laughs> <laughs> we got we got time for a couple more. Uh, but if if all of a sudden you guys step on stage and for some reason there's just there's ten thousand people at this show, it's a festival. You're playing the festival and there's ten thousand people there to see Titus. You've killed it. Nothing went wrong on this on this set. Everything was great. It's time to eat. We're backstage. This festival has caterers out the ass. What are you ordering? What is your go-to munchy meal on the best day ever? Holy shit, so, yeah. this is a new thing for me, because we don't have this down here in the south. Apparently, it's only, like, a northern thing, or, like, maybe if you go to Buffalo Wild Wings, you get lucky, yeah. but, so, my new thing is cheese curds. Okay. And, I would just straight up order that, like, that by itself. Like, I don't know if, like, you know, in other places, y'all have fancy, like, cheese curds or different prime, but all I know is that it's a ball of fried cheese, and I'm... Oh, fuck that. What's the difference between cheese curds and mozzarella sticks? Is it is the uh, shape of the, of, of the fried cheese? Like, Probably mostly. Like, uh, a stringy cheese. I find with cheese curds, they're like small little bites. And also, like, they're like real squeaky. Like, it sounds like you're going to eat rubber. But, like, that's how it's supposed to sound, apparently. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. What would you say, Jace? What would be... Know. What would you but, order from this caterer that could create anything? What is your, your go-to yeah. munchy snack? Dude, probably like, like just like a shit ton of stir fry or like pizza. I don't know, <laughs> like just a bunch. Like I'm just gonna eat all of it. If you're ordering <laughs> the pizza, what what are your toppings? Ooh, uh, it's not pepperoni and bacon. <laughs> I mean, I do be loving just pepperoni, but I also just love like supreme, any kind of like just load it up, you know, with all the shit. There's no toppings that 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 could go on the pizza that where you're like, nah, I don't want that on my pizza. Uh, I mean, like, I can't. I mean, anchovies might be a little weird, but like, I'm sure they're good. I just don't uh, like. I'm, I'm just not having that much. <laughs> I do like pineapple on pizza though. <laughs> I'll eat that. All right, you definitely out of the band <laughs> he's out What's the, i like pineapple on pizza too and i i do like anchovies um in fact every now and then when i order from papa john's on their like sides extras part of their menu you can order anchovies for like a dollar fifty and occasionally they just send me the whole can and i could eat a whole can of anchovies just sitting there i don't know why it's so salty and it's kind of nasty but it's like an addicting nasty taste yeah, I do love healthy food. There was two things wrong with that sentence, and it was that you eat anchovies and you order from Papa John. <laughs> <laughs> Trev, what you smoking on? You got an indica, sativa, a little bit of both, hybrid. What you what you what you chilling on? I got a uh, no no fucking idea. It's um, it's fire. <laughs> that's that's it's how I am. I, I put I put all my nugs in like this big ass jar, and um, I I don't know what I'm smoking. I just I just feel good afterwards. So. <laughs> I'm with the boomer, dude. I don't need to know the name of it. It smokes good. It looks good, and that's all. That's good enough for me. That's all that matters. 
Hell, uh, fellas, this was fun, man. I appreciate you guys making me laugh a bunch of times. Um, I was able to stump you once, but it was kind of a loophole because I couldn't find exactly the right trivia. But uh, once again, please plug and promote some stuff you have coming up. And uh, the floor is yours for a minute. Uh, catch us on tour in two weeks. We're uh, starting it off August 6th with Moonhaven in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Shooting up all the, all the way through Colorado and Wyoming. Then coming back, uh, we'll also be dropping three new songs. Check out our website. Go buy some sick-ass merch that we're uh, dropping new every fucking day. Um, go pick up some sick-ass pedals from my boy Vertigo Noise. He builds all my custom pedals, so you get sick-ass tones. Phone microphones, yeah. cool-ass shit. What? A phone microphone? That's a, a microphone? phone microphone. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've so never, ever, it. ever seen anything like that before. That is wicked cool. <laughs> yeah, it's man, it's my husband Brian. Once again, Vertigo Noise on Instagram. He makes fucking wild shit. So, so is there is there like the guts of like a Sure 57 like inside of that? I'm not sure of the specifics, but I'm pretty sure it's he just kind of put the adapter into for the plug-in and the rest of it is just the old fucking guts that were inside ah. so when we speak it we can Yo, do like a clear you're, like, you're you living know. in the year 3000 bro yeah, yeah. i've nope. never seen anything like that before so not in the 40s you're coming through an am fm ready radio but if you're trying to do some heavy type shit you can put it you can plug this into your amp fucking push your pedals in and put it towards your amp and just make a bunch of noise Bunch of screeching weedles and waddles and I, I applaud your your originality and and just how unique and cool that is. That is wicked cool. Final final one final question regarding the tour that's about to happen. Was that something that you guys put together yourself? And if so, how would you recommend a a band that is trying to do that, trying to put together a, a small tour? How did they even start that process? Okay, so this one was mainly uh, planned by our homie Jake, who's the, who's the guitarist of Moonhaven. But with our experience in touring, it's really um, just a fucking go for it, man. Like, uh, there's a lot of things that I hear from people where they're like, man, I'm scared to miss two days of work. Or like, I don't know who to contact or fucking this or that. And my best thing is go on Facebook. Go find these DIY groups of, like, the city you're looking for. Like, example, go look up Houston DIY music. Fucking find Houston bands, find Houston venues, and just start sending messages. You'd be surprised at how fucking nice people actually are. Like, everybody is all doing the same thing that you're trying to do. Everybody wants to make it. Everybody wants to see their homies make it. Why not just, you know, take the fucking chance and be like, all right, I'll miss work for two days. Or I'll sacrifice, you know, having to eat Whataburger and staying in a shitty ass fucking Super 8 motel or the bed of my fucking truck for a night. Tacoma. Main thing is go, man. <laughs> yeah. 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 Hell yeah. <laughs> well, thank you guys for the knowledge. Be, stay safe on tour. Please do me a favor, Trev, and make sure you look up some of those uh, Facebook groups in the Southern California area so we can get you guys over here and I can come support and bring some buddies out. That'd be awesome. But uh, you oh, guys dude. you guys are wicked cool, man. I, I appreciate you for joining today. Thank you so much. Thanks, of course. Trev. Thanks for having me. It was awesome. Hell yeah. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, Trevor and Jace of Titus. Give me a hell yeah. Hell yeah. Cheers, boys. Thank you so much. Alright, what's up, sir? Welcome to the local band, Smokeout.